friends, it's Jessie here. Welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, welcome. I am back with another weekly weigh-in and another opportunity to check in with you all on how I'm doing on my weight loss journey. I am not gonna go through the whole spiel again. If you are brand new here and you don't know about my weight loss journey, check out the previous weigh-in video where I kind of gave an overview and a rundown of where I started, where I am now, the changes I've made along the way. Um, for those that watch my videos every week, I don't want to repeat the whole thing again. So I will link that video in a card above. Um, actually, I'll just li link the whole playlist of all of the videos from my weight loss journey this time around. Certainly not the first time I've been on this roller coaster here. Um, but it's all it's all on a playlist. I'll link that playlist for you. You can check out all of the videos that you may have missed. For today, I want to talk to you guys, yes, about my weigh-in. But before I do that, I want to talk to you a little bit about some lessons I learned this week and some shifts in my mindset that came about this week that I think overall are going to be really, really good for me. So this past week was a little bit challenging for me. I felt hungry all week long. I'm not entirely sure why. I don't know if it has to do with where I am in my menstrual cycle, um, if it has to do with just the choices I was making in terms of foods, but I was just hungry all week. There were multiple days this past week where at the end of the day where I typically would stop eating, I was still hungry. And with this go around, I promised myself that I was not going to let myself be hungry. Like if I was bored and just feeling like snacking, that was one thing, but there were multiple days where I was actually hungry. And so on those days, I made use of my weeklies, which I typically don't do. I would add an extra serving from dinner or I would have an evening snack. Sometimes it was just like a zero point like apple. I always use apple as my example, um, banana, whatever. Um, but throughout the week, I noticed that I was just hungrier overall and I was dipping into my weeklies a lot more than I usually do. Typically, I don't really go into my weeklies at all, except for like a little bit of olive oil, maybe that I don't bother to count or some spices or whatever. Um, but this past week, I really struggled with just feeling hungrier, using more weeklies. I didn't re really feel guilty about that because that is what they're there for. They're there for you if you're still hungry. Um, I know a lot of people make sure that they use all of their weeklies. Um, for me, it's just always like an in case of emergency type situation. Like if I get to the end of the day and I'm still hungry or if we're having a celebration or whatever, then I will use my weeklies. This week, I used every single one of my weeklies and I used them kind of fairly quickly at the beginning of the week. And I was totally fine with that. Um, I was very, very confident that Easter was not going to derail me, so much so that I got on my members only live stream last week and talked about how Easter was gonna be no big deal. I wasn't worried at all that I was gonna overeat or overindulge. I didn't have any plans on indulging. I was going to just eat kind of a little bit of everything. Most of the foods that we had on Easter were kind of point friendly foods or foods that I could make point friendly. And so I was very confident going into the weekend that Easter was going to be easy breezy, no big deal. We are not incredibly religious. We don't have a ton of Easter traditions, though we do have a few. Um, but I just kind of figured it was just going to be another day in terms of the weight loss journey that I'm on in terms of Weight Watchers. And I ended up having a bit of a mindset shift about Easter um, due to a conversation that I had with my husband, which I'm gonna get into 
in a minute. But first I want to say my husband is incredibly supportive. I have said many, many times on this journey that it is very important to have a support system. I have my family. I have friends that are supporting me on this journey. I have my group of girls that I'm in collaboration with, which I've talked about for the last couple of weeks. I'm going to talk about them again. The Health and More in 2024 collaboration was started by my friend Kimberly over at All Things Kimberly. She invited myself and six other ladies now, or five other ladies, I guess, seven of us total, to join her in the collaboration. We are each posting a video a day. Um, wait, that came out wrong. Seven of us are each posting of one video a week, all on a different day. So you as a subscriber to our channels or just a viewer, can go to a different channel every single day of the week and find a video talking about weight loss, our health journeys. Some of us are talking about um, our budget and how our budget is affected by our health journeys and vice versa. We are all posting videos to support you guys and we're all in a group chat supporting each other. And that's been huge for me. I've also had the support of all of you both in the comment section of my video videos as well as um, with my new group that I started on Facebook there's a private um, weight loss support group that I have started it's like a, a Facebook page you can join I will link it down below um, it's a private group so only members can see that you are a part of that group and only members of that group can see your posts. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, people on your friends list seeing your posts or seeing that you're posting in a support group. I know some people like to keep their journeys private, um, you know, whatever, but that group is there as well. But it's really, really important that you have a support system with this weight loss journey. And going back to where I started, my husband has been like my number one supporter. He wants me to lose weight because he knows that it's important to me. He loves me just the way that I am. He wants to see me healthy, of course, but whether I'm counting calories or Weight Watchers points as the case may be, or just enjoying and not worrying about the number on the scale, he's always a huge supporter of me. What's most important to him is that I am happy and healthy and fulfilled and so when I kind of was talking to him about my plans for Easter I had mentioned to him that I was going to you know like avoid the banana pudding that we make every single year and I was going to refrain from adding like the honey glaze to our honey glazed carrots that I make every year and just like the shifts that I was going to make in our traditional Easter menu to accommodate my weight loss journey. And he said, great, if that's what you wanna do, that's fine. But have you considered that, you know, this is a lifelong journey and Easter comes around just one time a year, you also could just enjoy the holiday, enjoy our traditions. One day is not going to ruin all of the hard work you've put in so however you want to do it, I'll support you, but maybe just consider like, are you going to give up banana pudding on Easter forever? Are you going to give up our honey glazed carrots for something that's a little lower in calories or whatever? Like, are you going to make these modifications to our menu every single year? And if so, that's great. But just maybe consider that it's only one day a year. And that really had me thinking because on the one hand, I've been on this weight loss journey. It's very important to me, more important to me than banana pudding. But the thing of it is, is the banana pudding isn't just banana pudding. It's something that my son and I put together, together every year. It's part of our annual traditions with Easter. And it's not going to hurt me to have a little bit of banana pudding. So I made the decision to just enjoy Easter dinner. I still tracked everything to the best of my ability. I still didn't 
overindulge, but I did indulge. I had some banana pudding. I had the honey glazed carrots, which I absolutely love, by the way. They're my favorite part of Easter. Um, I had the ham and I even had a second serving of mashed potatoes and I didn't worry too much about going over on my Weight Watchers points. I knew that I didn't have weeklies left to cover it. And I just sort of made peace with the idea that, you know, the scale might be up this week. If it is, it's not the end of the world. I'm gonna be able to get right back on track. And so that's what I did. I enjoyed our Easter dinner. I had the deviled eggs and, which are actually really point friendly anyway, deviled eggs, by the way. If you are ever in a scenario where you're having a celebration and you want to stick with your points, I highly recommend deviled eggs. They're pretty low in points. Um, I had the gravy. I had everything. I enjoyed it. I had a great time with my family celebrating Easter. I even ate a couple of marshmallow eggs, which are my favorite Easter treat. And because of that, and because I was just hungrier throughout the week and ate more in general, my weight was up a little bit this week. And you know what? The world didn't end. I didn't have a panic attack standing on the scale. I recognized that, you know, fluctuations are normal. Um, some weeks are gonna be a little bit up, some weeks are gonna be a little bit down. And this is a lifelong journey. It's not the end of the world if I gained a pound, which I did. I gained 1.2 pounds this week. I weighed in at 260.4, which is 1.2 pounds up from last week. But it's fine. It's going to come right back off. I immediately got back on track on Monday. I weigh in on Tuesday mornings, so I probably still had some water weight hanging around from eating more than usual or from the high sodium and the ham or whatever, but like, so what? It's fine. It's all part of the journey. I didn't gain all of this weight in a day. I'm not going to lose it all in a day. And like I said, some weeks are going to be up. I'm actually a pretty big believer in the idea of having up weeks and down weeks or up days and down days. I think it kind of tricks your metabolism a little bit. I don't know how true it is, but that's what I tell myself. Um, so yeah, up a little bit this week, but overall, I feel like I learned a lot of lessons. Number one being enjoy your weeklies, eat them if you need them, but maybe don't eat them all at the beginning of the week. Cause if I hadn't done that, then Easter could have been enjoyed and indulged in and still been within my points. Because I had used up all my weeklies already, um, I was over for the week as a whole. I ate more points than I had allotted, hence weight gain, right? Um, so that's, that's a good lesson. Spread my weeklies out a little bit. Um, don't be afraid to use them because that's what they're there for, but maybe like, you know, keep in mind that we're not at the end of the week yet. Don't have them all gone by Wednesday or Thursday when you still have Friday, Saturday, Sunday to get through, especially on a week when there's a holiday. Good lesson, right? Um, and just that mind shift. Very important. I feel good. It could have been a scenario where I set myself the super strict rules to not eat anything that I enjoyed on Easter um, and then kind of fallen into that trap of it being like a forbidden food so it makes me want it more could have then overindulged and seen an even higher weight on the scale and been beating myself up over it instead i just indulged a little enjoyed the holiday got right back on track and that's huge for me the fact that i didn't beat myself up over it and I got right back on track that's a win so even though my weight's up a little bit um, I'm feeling really great. feel like it was a good mental health week for me. Um, I'm glad that it all worked out the way it did. I got to enjoy Easter and now I'm right back on track and I'm pretty confident I'm going to see a loss next week. So if you like this video, will you please give it a thumbs up? That really helps out my channel. Don't forget to subscribe. I post new weight loss content like this, what I eat in a day, weigh-ins, um, lots of other content as well, budgeting content, um, vlogs, grocery hauls, that sort of thing. I'd love to have you as part of the family. So yeah, click the subscribe button. You can also join my channel membership if you want even more content. I'd love to have you there as well. 
Don't forget to check out the ladies from the 2024 collaboration, the Help and More in 2024. Um, there are a total of seven of us. More on the way. Kim just let us know that she's probably going to open it up for another group of ladies. So if you're a content creator, you want to join with us, um, definitely check out Kim's YouTube channel and shoot her a message. I'm sure she can help accommodate you to get you set up if you want to be part of this. And if you're not a content creator and you just want some moral support on this journey, make sure you join the Facebook group because that's there for you as well. Okay, really saying goodbye now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!